Well, he certainly said only last year that um, he would have nothing to do with Leeds. I know there's this old rivalry, isn't there, you were yeah. telling me, between Chelsea Absolutely. and Leeds. So let's have a look at what he had to say last mm. year. I was approached. And I wasn't, wasn't interested for a number of reasons, which I'm not going to go into now. But I think Chelsea fans, with whom I've still got a tremendous affinity with, would uh, probably want to shoot me if I got involved with Leeds. So there, but he's obviously changed his <laughs> mind since. Just very quickly, you went to see him in Monte Carlo about yeah. his Sheffield Wednesday plans. Mm. Now, we've just heard from the MP Joe Ashton today that yeah. that's actually dead in the water. Let's have a quick look at that. Yeah. Well, he's, he's had an approach from Leeds, and he's he said, I've had to compare the commitment of both boards. He says, Leeds are absolutely committed to saving their club and getting back on it. The directors there admit their shares are worthless and they put four million pounds in the club and they, they've agreed to leave it there for four years. He's not bothered about the money, it's tons of money, but he sees that as a commitment with pe from people who he can work with. Story. Ken Bates has completed a ten million pound takeover of Leeds United. The outgoing chairman, Gerald Krasner, gave this reaction. The consortium, led by Mr Bates, completed the deal this morning. This deal ensures the medium to long-term survival of the club and I believe Mr Bates' proposals are totally for the benefit of the club. We are content that under Mr Bates, Leeds United will continue to consolidate and to move forward. Well, John Bucock from the Leeds United Supporters Trust joins us on the phone now. John, so far we've had plenty of support for Ken Bates. What's your reaction to the story? Uh, I'd rather be in the conference than have him as our chairman. Uh, quite honestly, I, I don't think that he, he'll bring anything as far as uh, supporters of the community or the club are concerned. He's, he's, people say that he's got a track record of having brought Chelsea up to where it is now. I think if Ronan and Abramovich hadn't come in, Chelsea would have been the story and not Leeds. Um, there were other offers on the table which have been conveniently cast aside and those offers involved um, the supports and the community and I think that that's more important for a club that's got no assets to involve the, 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 the one group of people in it who can see the club go forward. He is bringing plenty of experience to the club though. I mean uh, experience like wanting to put uh, electrified fences up to keep fancies in, fat fans in. <laughs> I, I think that uh, you've got to take all of that with a pinch of salt because um, there are a number of people who've chaired football clubs for a very long time. Uh, but as far as supporters are concerned, they haven't been people who you would consider to be anybody you'd want running your club. Do you feel that the £10 million investment is enough for Leeds United? <clears throat> no, I don't. And I think that uh, that's something that needs to be made clear because it's my understanding that um, uh, the debts run to nearer £25 million. So it may be all that he's going to do is he's going to put a short-term fix to keep people like the taxman, the bondholders and, and some football creditors at bay. But it doesn't show us any way how you can, you can deal with it in the long term. For the time being, though, Leeds have been saved um, from administration and, of course, what would have been a very valuable 10 points uh, deduction. Uh, I, well, I think that the, the thing about that is that the, um, uh, the other bids that were on the table would have also saved us from administration. And on Monday, it was made very clear that Norman Stubbs was just dealing with the final creditors and would have taken over. So it's, it's not saved as, as if there was nobody else about. And I think that anybody who's saying if it hadn't been Ken Bates, that would have been it, is wrong. Could you see plenty of changes now behind the scenes? Of course, Kevin Blackwell has, uh, has kept Leeds in touch so far this season. Uh, yeah, I, I think there will be um, th there will be changes, and one of the things that I'd be worrying about is that uh, if some of those changes might be for the worst, I don't think Kevin Blackwell should be touched. He's done a good job with a, a team that at the start, of the, start of the season didn't even know each other, and we know that um, uh, Ken Bates' comment was, um, I don't think goalkeepers make good managers. Do you think um, that, that your opinion is that uh, your your opinion is that of the majority? Uh, yeah, and I think as things start to unfold, more people will feel the same way. So I guess you'll be uh, going over to the press conference. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's my next part call. All right, John, thanks very much for your views. Cheers, bye. In the last few minutes, Gerald Krasner has spoken to Bryn Law, and this is what he had to say. Well, Gerald, the deal is done, it would seem. Yes, 2.27 this morning. What is the nature of the deal? Uh, Ken's team will now move in and take this club much quicker than we ever could back to where they belong. This secures the future of this football club in, in what degree of time? To what degree Medium, of time? Medium, long term. Ken's very serious. I'm not going to preempt his plans. He will disclose them next week before the Brighton match is held. But I've seen them, he's discussed them with me. 
and they are far and away the best offer we ever had to help Leeds United. Ken's a football fan when all said and done. Yeah, you would only do a deal, presumably, that was in the best interest of the club you support. Correct. That's why some of the earlier deals were dealt with by the board the way they were. I'll just say that we met Ken on Monday for the first time. We talked it all through. We did an outline deal. He offered what we needed. Board approved immediately on Tuesday. Deal done Thursday. Nobody else has ever moved like that. Great, great on Ken's behalf. No, no last minute hitches. Solicitors worked well. The deal was done early this morning. You've met the staff. Are you stepping down from your role? I have resigned as chairman and director, as has all the board. But what I will say, Ken has asked us to stay on in unpaid, again, consultancy to assist with the takeover and to implement his plans. We will be around here for a while. What would you say to those Leeds United supporters who may have a suspicion, even because of the Chelsea link? A suspicion of what? Of what Ken Bates' motives might be, what he might do for the club. Ken Bates' motives are to prove yet again that he will run a football club successfully. How do you feel today? A bit tired, you know. How do I feel? Well, we say we saved the club from extinction. That's always going to live with me. We managed to solve 80% of the problems. Ken will solve the rest, no doubt. When we're back in the Premiership with some silverware, I'll be quietly smiling that we played a very small part in that. We've all spent a lot of time standing outside this ground on such occasions. Is this an end to it now? An end to what? To the waiting, to the uncertainty, to, to everyone worrying about the well, future of the club. That's up to you a lot in the media. You love to uh, use the innuendos of third parties to sell what you're selling. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, this club was always going to survive. You know, we had talks of administration that were just off the wall. That was never, ever going to happen here. We had all sorts of contingency plans. It's perhaps not a question for you to answer, but do you know what Kevin Blackwell's future might be? Ask Ken. <laughs> and when are we likely to hear or see Ken Bates Next at Ellen Road? Week. Oh, he'll definitely be here at the Brighton match. He may be at the Stoke match, but he will deal with it in his own way next week. Good day for Leeds? Yes, great day for Leeds. Well, Ken Bates completed his takeover of Leeds United and I'm delighted to say that Leeds director Peter Lorimer is there for us. Peter, a very good morning for you. Is this a great morning for Leeds United? Good morning. I think it's a great relief round Leeds. Um, you know, there was a serious threat of administration and everybody was getting very concerned. But thankfully, Ken's come forward uh, with his consortium and, and rescued the package. So we're obviously all delighted about that. Does that mean, money-wise, you're safe in the short term, the medium term, the long term, or what? Well, knowing Ken Bates, he's got a great reputation and a great record in football for lots and lots of years. I wouldn't think Ken Bates will be coming to Leeds United just to, to be a director of a football club. Knowing him, he, he still has ambitions. I spoke to him yesterday, and I, I know he, he wants to come here and do another good job like he did at Chelsea uh, going back over the years. So uh, anybody who, with common sense would realise that Ken Bates will be here to take Leeds United hopefully back uh, to the top. Peter, there were other consortia we gather involved. Why Ken Bates? Well, I, I wouldn't know. That would uh, that would be down to our, our financial directors who were doing the deal. They always they always said that um, whatever deal they did, they would it would be done for the benefit of this football club. And um, you know, there's been lots of people over the last 12 months looking at the situation, but none of them have come forward. Ken Bates has come forward. Um, he's put his money down, and he wants to do the job. But I, I think we've also got to thank the other consortium, especially the local one, who's been working hard over the last couple of months to try and put something together, because they didn't want the football club, um, you know, to go into administration or, or go down that road. So there's lots of people been trying really hard, but Ken Bates is the man who's come forward, and, and he's hopefully going to be the one that's going to take us the next step. Now in the past he's had some pretty uncomplimentary things to say about Leeds United and Leeds United fans. Are you worried about how the fans might react? <laughs> no, I, listen, in every foot, I've been in the city this morning. The general feeling of the fans, they're absolutely delighted. Uh, you know, they're very excited about somebody of, of Ken Bates' stature taking over the club with his footballing experience. Um, you know, there's lots. Of, you'll always get one or two negatives around a around situation. Um, but the general feeling in the city is one of relief and happiness that um, they've got somebody now officially in charge and we'll know where the next step's going to go. And I, I also think there's a a great depth, 
as far as uh, everybody's concerned in Leeds, to the, to the last board who have had a, a, a torrid uh, nine months um, trying to sort out the financial problems. And, but the work they've done has been tremendous. They've, I think they've taken the debt from £103 million down to just over £20 million. So, you know, I think everybody in the city also owes them uh, a great debt as well. Peter, you, of course, were part of that board, a director uh, under Gerald Krasner's consortium. Where does it leave you on a personal level? Yeah, well, I spoke to Ken yesterday and he said he would like me to keep uh, on in the same capacity that I've been before. That's basically working with, within the city, you know, um, with the fans, with the corporate people and in general just promoting the football club. And, you know, I'm delighted to do that because, you know, this football club's been my life for a lot of years and, and you know, the way it was going, obviously... Uh, was very sad for everybody around here and just we see the light now we can see this we're on the way back uh, and I think that's a great feeling and let's hope um, you know what I believe is, is true and, and it won't be too long till we're back in the Premiership. Do you think uh, your role as the liaison between the board and the fans has got harder overnight given that Ken Bates is of course associated with Chelsea and Chelsea and Leeds let's, let's say are not the best of mates are they? <laughs> Well, Chelsea beat us in a cup final. I think it was 33 years ago. Um, you know, I think life's got to go on um, uh, away from that. I mean, at the, the end of the day, it's all about football. It's all about a great football club, Leeds United, um, who were at the very, very top only, what, two years ago. They've had a nightmare period, a lot of bad criticism. But no, now, hopefully, you know, as, as I say, I, I, I genuinely feel there's a, a lot of smiling faces around the club now and, and we can see that we are, we are winning the battle. It won't be an overnight thing, I'm sure, but, you know, I think we're on the way back. Peter, we've spoken to you a lot over these troubled times for Leeds. It's nice to see you smiling at last. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> Thank you very much. Straight down the line. As quickly we sat down, he's not bothered with due diligence, not like some people. He has accepted what we've told him. He's looked at the property deals we did. He's quite happy with them. He's putting his plans together. And no doubt next week he'll have a good story to tell you. I mean, with Ken Bates has always put his money down and he's always said what he thinks and I think if you do put your money down you're entitled to say what you think it's your, it's your money and you can it's up to you to sort the job out and uh, you know anybody that can't stand that shouldn't shouldn't be uh, in football because football is a game like that it's all about results it's always it's all about the fans being happy it's all about success and that's what Ken Bates wants so you know I don't have any problem with that he'll probably ruffle a few feathers but why not it's it's all a, it's all a bit of fun isn't it so it's out with the old and in with the new. Gerald Krasner was at Ellen Road to tell the staff they have a new boss and he headed for the training ground to tell the players. He put his money down immediately, not done any due diligence, not interested. He's sat down, he's talked to us man to man, I like the way he does business, he's kept his word, you can't ask for anything more. And I think when the Leeds fans hear his plans, because there'll be a press conference by him, before the, the week of the Brighton match, I think they'll be pleased. Leeds can't afford to get promoted this season. The club's new chairman says consolidation is the short-term goal, but says the long-term aim is to get back into Europe. Bates, who paid £10 million to take over the club, also wants to buy back Ellen Road and the training ground. And speaking exclusively to Rob Watton, he's uh, dismissed suggestions that Dennis Wise could replace Kevin Blackwell as manager. I don't know uh, who are the people who are saying it, but it's a load of... Uh, I think it's a technical Sorry, we have to well apologise for that, that's your well, term. Well known in uh, football. Um, I've said to Kevin Blackwell, I know nothing about his ability. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And he's given, he's given, I'm giving my full support. The, uh, that's the famous uh, chairman's vote of confidence. I'm giving my full support and obviously he'll be judged on results. He's had a very difficult time since he took over. Perhaps now he'll have a more of a chance to see it, and I wish him well. As do with the team as well, because somebody actually said if the team last year had performed the same passion and fight that they're doing this year, they wouldn't have got relegated. OK, with, with all due respect to Preston, Crewe, Burnley, um, they're all above Leeds United in the table at the moment. Leeds United should be higher than that. Uh, what, what's your short-term ambition and eventually realistically what's the long-term ambition with the debt that the club have got well i think mean, obviously at the moment is a stabilized everything it's only a couple fortnight away from possible administration but the previous board have done a fantastic job on that um then the festival is to stabilize the team stabilize the finances at least be comfortable in uh, 
uh, in the championship. I mean, getting to the playoffs will be a bonus, but uh, not quite sure whether, whether it's realistic or not. Certainly wouldn't get, wouldn't get, wouldn't like to get promoted this year. I know Dowie, um, yeah, Dowie did it last year, but um, you've probably got too soon. You'll all guys come down again. Um, I would think that uh, maybe win promotion next couple of seasons. Be on this one. Establish yourself in the Premiership and aim for a top six place and go back to the Europe. Uh, football fans always want to know the first thing is is how much money will there be to buy players to, to to get fresh faces in to get the talent that took them to the to the heights of the Champions League only a few years ago. Well if I double the admission prices there'll be plenty of money available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they'd like that one wouldn't they? <laughs> is, is there money? I'm not I never discussed uh, business affairs on the media. It's not with you Rob. But there is still £21 million pounds worth yeah. of debt. Is, is there a threat of administration still and a 10-point no. deduction, which, which no. is the real killer? No. no. Question. But, I mean, is that potential there at Leeds? I mean, Leeds fans will want well, to know. Well, I think, I think they, uh, it's been demonstrated there is potential, is there? Look what they've done. Uh, they're very well known. They've had a good uh, run in Europe. Um, but perhaps they did it too quickly and over-ambitiously. I think we can do it again, but on more slowly, more realistically, and build on solid foundations. You had to fight Cabra and Marler Estates when you were here to, to buy back Stamford Bridge. Obviously, well, we there's Ellen Road and the training well, ground well, we are gone from Leeds. No, we have none of those uh, complications up there. Yes, they did sell the land at uh, Ellen Road and the training ground to do a sale on lease back. But we have options to buy it back, and it's our intention in due course to do exercise those options. Is, is the, that the, the key to building ground, The training ground is absolutely fabulous. I was gobsmacked when I saw it yesterday. Is that the key to building a foundation, though? You have to have your own ground, you have to have your own of facilities, course. right? Security to tenure. All the laws of finance, they should have gone. Get them float, now they're safe. Uh, Stabilised, and we're going forward. Look at this behind us here. You're going to do the same thing at Ellen Road with Leeds? Well, hopefully there's more land there, so ultimately it could be a uh, much greater development. I call it Ellen City instead of Ellen Village. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. The outgoing chairman leaves a happy man. He has no concerns about handing Bates the reins. Ken Bates voted are to prove yet again that he will run a football club successfully. We managed to solve 80% of the problems. Ken will solve the rest, no doubt. When we're back in the Premiership with some silverware, I'll be quietly smiling that we played a very small part in that. This is uh, the live picture now from Ellen Road. You can see Peter Lorimer at the top of your screen there, and there is the man himself we've all been waiting for. Ken Bates, the new chairman, alongside the old chairman, Gerald Krasner. That's a surprise. Didn't expect that. This is uh, the first time he's actually been up at Ellen Road, as far as we're aware, of course. He's uh, had meetings with Kevin Blackwell and various others. Uh, but we're all interested in what he's going to say, outlining his plans for the future of Leeds United. The takeover deal completed last week. £10 million it cost the former Chelsea chairman. Gentlemen, take your photographs, please. Let's uh, hear what he has to say. I'm not going to have those, I can't have those things flashing in my face all the time. Why, right, Susanna? Yeah. We just do a picture you, Mr. Crescent. Any person that gives you a flash with me, is that <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to shake hands again? It just uh, seems that the they're just doing their photo <laughs> call, trying to get the photos out of the way before the actual press conference starts, which is why we have a cameraman in front of our lens. Why they're still smiling. <laughs> yeah, as well. Thank you very Ken much. Bates, of course, always controversial, always interesting to hear what he has to say. You can now rush away, do your deadlines and... Uh, and it looks as though he's about to start his press conference. Once all the uh, photographers are moved out of the way, we'll hear what his plans for Leeds United are, what his thoughts about Kevin Blackwell, and perhaps, I'm sure somebody will ask him his views on Chelsea. We'll look forward to Come hearing on, what he has to say. He's uh, talked about the fact that Leeds can on, still Tiny. get promoted this year. A real blow for them last night, losing 2-0 at Derby. They're 11th in the Championship, only no, 8 points, me. though, still... Ow off a playoff place, so still feasible. Kevin Blackwell has a couple of injury problems as well that have got worse after last night's game at Pride Park. Um, so possibly he might be persuading his new chairman to dip his hands in those uh, pockets that well, he's he dipping his now. hands in too. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's got bundles of cash in there. Probably not. So here we go, let's uh, hear what the new Leeds chairman has to say about his plans for Ellen Road. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think you know who I am. And uh, speaking as the ex-chairman of Leeds, it gives me great pleasure to introduce somebody who needs no introduction, 
a guy I did a deal with in four days who's going to take Leeds United forward and back to where they belong, Ken Bates. Thank you very much. One to no one Ah, sorry. No one-to-ones afterwards. We're going to deal with you all equally. Mr Bates. Thank you, Joe. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've got a funny look for an old fellow over there. Um, thank you for coming today. What can I tell you about Leeds that you haven't written about, sometimes accurately and sometimes not, over the last few years and indeed few months or few weeks? Um, it's quite true that Leeds were in a parlous position, trying to correct the situation of the past, but we're not talking about the past today. Today is the first, or yesterday was the day, first day of a new era. Um, I suppose it's all the obvious stuff, like Leeds are a great club, for a hard time, lots of potential, blah, 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 but I won't. And having said that, I've said it. Um, I think that in the few days we've... Now let me go back to last week to correct a few misconceptions. There was a suggestion from some lady that uh, uh, I was sort of rushed in headstrong, whereas other syndicates had done two to three months of what they called due diligence. I'd rushed in in four days. I would have taken a flyer, probably would land on flat on my face. Well, they seem to forget that Trevor Birch had been here for nearly a year. And I got all my stories. Excuse me. No more in, please. Now shut it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's not fair to these people. Um, so, of course, I knew exactly what was going on at Leeds. And when uh, on Friday I heard that the Sainsbury's consortium, which I was never a member, collapsed. I had a phone call from a mutual friend of 30 years. It talked to, suggested it could be uh, a good challenge for me. Joe and uh, <coughs> Melvin Levi came down on the Monday. We went and did a deal, subject to approval by the board. Went back on Wednesday with my finance director of some 22 years standing, the first lady director in football and who's a bit of a Rottweiler underneath her sheep's clothing. And um, we were satisfied with what we saw, particularly with the fact that uh, Mr. Kraus was a professional man and he put his rep professional reputation on the line on the figures he presented to us. And I have to say that uh, Leeds' problems to a great extent were over somewhat overstated because um, in effect, there are only £17 million pounds of debt other than, that you had to worry about other than um, current trading. £4.4 4 million pounds of that was owed to the, well, now the former directors, which they put money in by way of unsecured loans. They immediately, <coughs> without hesitation, agreed to postpone repayment for four years. You might want to compare that with, or contrast that with the attitude of the director at Sheffield Wednesday. <coughs> Two directors had service contracts. They tore them up on the spot without compensation, without being asked to do so. So your 17 million debt now comes down to 12 and a half. <coughs> Ignoring the specials, I'm sorry, madam, I said no more photographs. Thank you. You don't need any favours by trying to be clever. Um, where was I? I was really interrupting myself. Um, pardon? Twelve and a half. I'm glad somebody's listening. Okay, twelve and a half. <laughs> if you take away the payment, the special payment to uh, the inland revenue, there's three and a half million pounds, which brings it down to nine. And Gerald Krasner had successfully negotiated a um, stage phase payment with the revenue over the next two or three years and I have to say that uh, the revenue have been completely supportive of uh, Leeds uh, throughout in fact in some ways they probably bent their own rules uh, I hope that's now been paid off that's now paid off so when you look at that they're not a great deal of debt Leeds haven't got any money they haven't got any debt. 
uh, last uh, last Friday, the revenue were paid their 1.2 million. Yesterday, the uh, vet man was paid his particular 1.6 million, which arose from the sale of the I think the training ground. No, the what? Sale of Ellen Road. The Vat on Ellen Road. Oh, sorry, the Vat on Ellen Road. Um, same thing, different location. Uh, we paid the wages, uh, which uh, meant that some of the staff could eat again, and we made a substantial payment off of ordinary creditors. So I think you can say that whereas, if you like, a couple of weeks ago, Leeds were, had just had about their head above the water and were gasping for breath, they're now, on the surface, swimming against the tide. The next job is to turn around so we're swimming with the tide. We have had two approaches for some of our young players this week. They've been turned down. That moves me <coughs> to Kevin Blackwell, where there's been quite a lot of speculation, total, some of it totally unfounded, some of it, quite frankly, mischievous at best, malicious at worst. I have never contemplated or discussed um, Dennis Wise coming to be manager of um, Leeds. Any conversation I had with him recently when he asked Suzanne and I to be uh, the godfather to the latest child. I said, OK, but does that mean I've got to come to the uh, baptism? Apparently I do. Uh, and we're honoured that we've been asked. I think Brian Robson was another name cropped up. Never considered it. I can confirm that in the last 10 days, I've had an awful lot of applicants for out of work uh, managers and, of course, the ever present avaricious agents. When I reviewed what I came in here with an open mind as far as Kevin was concerned, um, but when I understood the magnificent job he'd done here from a standing start <coughs> last August, it was only him and Kelly. The fact that you got 40 points and built a young team, probably they're too young to win anything, but uh, they're gaining great experience and showing tremendous potential. I think he's done a marvellous job. And uh, We had lunch today, not dinner a couple of days ago over cigars and brandy, as some idiot wrote. Um, and I told him they had my unqualified support. We swapped, as lovers do, home and mobile telephone numbers. And we've agreed to work closely together. But at the end of the day, footballing decisions are his and not mine. Uh, in the short time we've been here, we've reviewed the administrative staff, which is just as important in, a, in as big a business as Leeds as, as anywhere else. This is the playing side. And so far, we have uncovered no black holes. The staff seem to be magnificent. They've done a fantastic job under impossible circumstances. And once again, they've been given a vote of confidence. The current uh, chief executive, Sean Harvey, that's the ugly one with the glasses and going bald, over there, going bald at the moment, um, probably at the result of the last year. Um, again, he's done a fantastic firefighting job. And I have every confidence in the fact that he'll come in the future. We have, of course, already had all kinds of applications for how to work chief executives. Let me deal with Trevor Birch, who's a friend of ours, mine. He did a great job here, and to quote Mr. Kasner, if Trevor Birch hadn't been here, there wouldn't be a Leeds United today. However, he is not coming back, he's moved on. Uh, he, as you may know, is a senior partner in a firm of accountants, and he's in control of the whole area from Liverpool to Leeds. However, like so many other people, he's offered me his unstinting advice and support, free of charge, if we need it. And I also pay tribute to the former directors who also stayed on without pay, without pushing themselves forward, simply said, we're here if you need us. And that does mean that we have a, a great management team going forward. Well, well. Um, OK, um, the next thing is the training ground and Ellen Road. As you know, that was done under a sale <coughs> and leaseback deal. But that's the bad news, though it was necessary. 
the good news is that we intend in the fullness of in the good sorry the good news is that we have an option to buy back both properties at a fixed price and it is our intention in the fullness of time to exercise those options and bring the land and the stadium back where it belongs. However, again in the fullness of time, you've got to remember only been, only been cha uh, chairman what, for six days and been up here a day. Um, we intend to work out a solution whereby a pitch will eventually revert to the ownership of the fans. As will the name, <coughs> as will the name Leeds United Football Club, and the fans' organisation will grant the club back a 199-year lease at a pound a year, <coughs> and give us a 199-year licence to use the name Leeds United Football Club. However, if Leeds ever move out, they will lose the rights to the pitch and they lose the right to Leeds United as a name. So if they want to go to, I don't know, somewhere else, it has to be whether be athletic or something. And the fans will then have the right, as per uh, uh, Wimbledon, to start their own club, if necessary, in the bottom, and then Leeds United. That should ensure once and for all that any would-be greedy, predatory property developers don't waste their time knocking on the door. And in the unlikely event that in the future, that the Leeds gets into financial difficulties again, nobody will be able to try and seize the ground on the chip. Now, uh, oh, uh, and I should also say that the uh, former directors have also handed over their shares for a nominal sum not for profit, as some pillock suggested in one of the papers. So, what you've had, you've had five directors you know, who, according to them, know nothing about football, which in theory meant they might all have been perfect chairman, um, but they just work to save Leeds. They've taken a lot of abuse from certain quarters, they've been totally unjustified. They have made no hidden profits, they have no remuneration. Their only desire was to keep Leeds United afloat. As Gerald said, and I agree with him, they did 80% of the work. That's how I like it. So I can just pick up the last 20% and take the credit for the lot. Um, I look forward to meeting the fans tonight. And I look forward to making my home debut, so to speak, uh, on Saturday. I must confess that after we beat Stoke on Saturday, on Saturday, Sunday I seriously considered retiring on the base I had defeated record, hadn't conceded a goal, and they were looking good. Uh, then Derby fucked it up. Oh, sorry, Derby <laughs> buggered it up last night. So that uh, I've got to start again on Saturday. Uh, we're nine points off of nine points off of safety for relegation. And we're 17 games to do it. So I think uh, the gloom and doomsters can forget Leeds joining Sheffield Wednesday, unless Sheffield Wednesday come up. And for their fans, I hope they do. Um, and he can now use the rest of the season to build for the future. Thank you very much for coming, gentlemen. Uh, and I promise the Leeds fans uh, to use Silla Black's phrase, we're going to have a lot of lower laughs. And I can only promise some blood, sweat, and tears, and hope not too many tears. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we could be uh, having worry. a question and answer session. Before they do that, let's just apologise for. Uh, Ken Bates, uh, when you, slightly uh, outspoken you, uh, comments there. He is a man who uh, speaks before uh, quite realising it sometimes. There could be some questions coming up now. Can you explain uh, how you intend to fund your ambitions for Leeds? No, I think I don't know of any other big business or small business that talk about their financial situations in public. <coughs> and we intend to follow that tradition. Uh, if we make public uh, financial plans, it alerts the competitors and gives all kinds of difficult problems. And quite frankly, that's, this is a private company, it's a private club, and that kind of will stay in house. Uh, David Anderson, David Murray. Sorry? Uh, David Anderson. Well, the Daily Mail, my old adversaries. Oh, he's, he's gone, though. Has he? Yeah. I know. You should see what's happened. Which one of them? Piers Moran or Kelly?
Oh, no. No, we're showing Kelly up. Okay. Yes, yeah, right. Um, Kevin Black was speaking last night saying how he... Who was? Kev, Kevin Black yeah. was speaking last night saying how he feeds and he's one or two more players. I was just wondering, will there be any money for well, players now? Well, I've just... You hear what I said there? I love you guys. You answer a question. You ask a question. You don't like the answer. You ask it another way. You know, that's, th that's what your job's for, and I appreciate that. But, but I'm an old dog to realise that that's what you're doing. Um, as I said before, we intend to give no... Uh, commercial information to our competitors, of which there are, I believe, 91. Now, Kevin and I had, as I say, an excellent lunch today, and he outlined what he wanted to do, go forward, <coughs> and we agreed we would work together to succeed. Thank you. Gentleman behind you. The Bill Hall, Financial Times. Can you tell financial me... Financial Times? Yeah. Can you tell You're me... A bit out of your depth here, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these guys are what about... Uh, Finance, they know nothing about it. You're going to write about sport and you probably know nothing about it. Anyway, go on. I don't, I don't, really, I don't know anything about it. Who actually owns the club? You've, you've got 50% of it, haven't you? Yes. Who's got the other 50%? Um, well, once again, uh, that's, I'm afraid, believe you not, believe me, it's a financially sensitive situation, but the announcement will be made in due course. In the medium future rather than the short term. Sorry? Yeah, Tony totally Francis, Daily Telegraph. You did quite nicely out of the Chelsea deal. Yeah, I worked for 22 and a half years for nothing. <coughs> right. But you did all right in the end. You don't need this. What's a Buckinghamshire lad doing in Leeds? What do you well, do actually, I come from Richmond in Surrey. But I spent 13 years <coughs> up North Lad in Oz. I know, but what are you doing in Leeds? Uh, I'm running Leeds United Football Club as chairman. Why? Because I wanted a challenge. Another challenge. But you could be playing golf. I don't play golf. I hate gin. I can't even tell the taste of it. I've answered your question. I wanted one more challenge. Well, what was wrong with Sheffield Wednesday? Um, well, you'll find out about Sheffield Wednesday in due course. Not for me to comment in public. Ask those questions to Mr. Allen. Uh, why, why Leeds instead of Sheffield Wednesday? Sheffield Wednesday, uh, the supporters wanted me. Uh, the board didn't. The board wanted all their money out on day one, <coughs> including the one and a half million pounds they spent on Shares, which are worthless, uh, they've stopped paying the interest on their bank loan because they can't afford it, uh, whereas it contrasts with Leeds and said, we'll leave our money in, we'll help you we can. That's the answer. I hope that Wednesday do well, because uh, they're lovely fans, but I fear for them. Not many people... Hang on, that's three questions, two questions, third oh, one coming up. No, no, I'm going to spread it around. Was there a quote Gentleman here. Yeah, Matthew Dunn, Daily Express. Given your accommodation arrangements, how much of a hands-on role are you going to be able to have at the club? Well, my accommodation aren't a problem, you see, because uh, if you think about it, um, Jack Walker used to run Blackburn from somewhere, Jersey. Sure. <laughs> um, the gentleman that owns uh, Bolton lives in the Isle of Man. Uh, it's not a very good example, but Millwall was run for Norway. Um, I'm allowed 90 days, and the days in and days out don't count. So, for example, if I fly into Leeds Bradford on Wednesday, get here at 10 o'clock, and leave after the game on Saturday, I've got four days full working, and then it used up two of my 90. So, that's the answer. And with fax and phones today, uh, you can run virtually any business from anywhere in the world. As long as you don't go, as long as you don't try and deal with a call centre in India, but that's another story. Um, not for publication. But on top of that, my PA is moving up here full time. Um, she is um, first class. In fact, I'm so quite sure sometimes who works for who. Uh, Yvonne Todd, finance director, who's come on the board, unpaid. Uh, she will be here. <coughs> I'm as sure already. I'm confident about Sean Harvey. Look how his head's getting bigger. And I'm also happy with Kevin Blackwell. So you can, once you've laid down the policy, a good management team does the work for you. You just take the credit. They do the work. Ken, Mike Morgan from The Sun. Uh, this club's had a fairly spectacular... Now be careful what you write, because I can get my own back on Saturday. I know you can, yeah. <laughs> uh, this club's had a fairly spectacular fall from grace over the last three or four years. Have you put a time scale on when you want to no, see them back to work? that's the whole point. Um, first of all, you can never guarantee any football. And secondly, if you... If you do or you make promises, we eventually prove to be stupid. Um, Leeds became an outstanding club in the Premier League and in Europe, but they did too quickly. Um, Kevin will take his time, his time scale. 
He's under no pressure. I don't think the Leeds fans realistically are expecting very much uh, in the immediate future. And um, we'll see how it goes. Can Ian Park's press association? I hear you. Ian Park's press association. Yeah, yeah. Over the last two and a half years, Leeds fans have seen player after player sold to ease debts. Can you give them any kind of assurance that the debts are now overdone with them? Well, well I hope you were listening, because a little while ago, I said no player would be sold unless Kevin Blackburn sell him. So, same question, different word. Madam? Uh, Ashling at Colourful Times. Oh, yes. Yeah, we read your funny um, article. I was wondering um, whether you had any plans to replicate what you've done at Chelsea after you know whether the Leeds village would work. Well, it has 50 acres of land, which are actually derelict, derelict at the moment. I understand the uh, city are very supportive. We'd like to see a, a rather nice development here, but that's, that's on the back burner. By the way, I think when you said you'd seen loads of confidential documents, uh, they're all out of date. Just to tell you that. And you have, on Saturday, I think you wrote, well, not you, but the, you can tell, Mr. Joe. Yeah, a letter of claims gone to your paper today, by the way. Asked them to withdraw the rubbish they wrote on Saturday, um, and we await their reply. Otherwise, they would be hearing <coughs> from his learned friends. So. Yeah, I'm Tim Ewart from uh, ITN. Could I just ask you to expand a little bit? You talked just a short while ago about the challenge. What is it particularly about <coughs> running a football club for somebody now in their 70s that... that uh, excuse me, if you get personal, I can do it better than you. Okay. So carry on. I just wondered if you'd expand on that. What, what is it about running a football club that's so... Well, first of all, it's so exciting. Fight. It's exasperating. It's exhilarating. I should have said switch your mobiles off. And um, what else is there? It's going to be great fun. <coughs> Did you ever think about doing anything outside football? Would it, was it only ever going to be football? Well, I thought we'd take over ITN and sacking you, but it was different. Now, I'm only interested in soccer. That's my passion in life. Has been since I was 16. Will somebody please do the courtesy of switching their mobile phone off? Oh, <laughs> typical <laughs> ITN. <laughs> Probably your editor sacking you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you one? What? Can I ask you one more question? Well, just wait a minute. Anybody else? At the back. Nick Harris from the Independent. Independent. Oh yeah. Can you tell me a bit more about how the pitch scheme will work. How? Will that be the fans buying into the pitch? No, the fans honest? will hear it first, <laughs> and then it'll be. We're still working on it. I can't tell you. Will it be along the same lines as what? you did at Chelsea with fans in the pitch? No, I've just look. You've asked the same question twice. And I answered the first time, I said, it will be announced later. And when you tell that silly bird of yours that I do not park my car illegally at Chelsea, I pay £3,000 a year for two parking spaces. And it's that kind of uh, trivia that irritates uh, me beyond. And it's very easy, we won't talk to the independent. You can't run with the hound, hunt with the hounds. I I, this is a statement for all of you. I welcome constructive criticism because that's what opinions are like. But if it's malicious, strictly misleading, but then it's very simple, I won't, won't work with you. So you better tell Alison whatever her name is, Bennett or Bonnet. I'm told by my wife who's a writer that she's a good writer. Just as she wrote a load of rubbish, well. There's a gentleman over here, you are. Oh, hello, hello. <coughs> sorry, whoever this is, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see, when you look at English football, any likelihood of the stranglehold of the top three clubs in the Premiership being broken? Do you see a way for well, clubs like Leeds eventually who thought the Sheffield, the, Who thought the Chelsea would break the stranglehold? <laughs> who th would have thought the Leeds did? You can never tell in football. Um, things come and go. But I'll point out one to you, over the last 20 years, the three most successful clubs in the country, Liverpool, United and Arsenal, haven't been run on philanthropy, it's been run on first-class business lines. <coughs> and that's how Leeds will work. <coughs> oh, can we get something else? Which I believe somebody wrote there saying, the Premier League are in decline, or this, and that, and the other, declining attendances. Now, I don't know why people write that kind of stuff, because Richard Scudder will point it out. That despite three clubs with large capacity going down and three clubs with small coming up, I understand total gate attendance is up this year as they are in the Football League. 
So let's have some positive peace for English football. Uh, it is your football, and you make your living out of supporting them. So. Uh, Bryn Law, Sky Sports. Oh, Sky Sports. What sort of reception are you anticipating from those supporters tonight, Chairman? Adulatory. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that, uh, well, I think that the majority of football supporters are far more intelligent than they give them credit for. So I expect an interesting, lively discussion, and I hope to give them the reinsurance that they need. Did I say reinsurance? Yes, reassurance. <laughs> Maybe both. Uh, that they pub that they deserve after the last couple of years. Ken, Richard Fergus from Radio Air. What kind of chairman should the supporters expect you to be? Well, that's way to find out, won't it? They can read all the stuff that's been written about me in the newspaper the last 20 years and, and draw their own misconceptions and then we'll put it right. Yeah. Ooh, I look forward to having a happy relationship with Leeds fans and working with them. I understand, in fact, that Mr. Bucock, uh, who's been apparently a vociferous criticism person, Critic, critic of me with a load, certain amount of uh, certain amount of um, personal abuse has resigned this morning, saying he misjudged the mood of the fans and realised his position is untenable. I hope that I never have to say that. Hi, um, you said ten months ago. Thank you. Who are you? Calling ITV Yorkshire. Sure, you haven't changed since I spoke to you last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said ten months ago when you were at a press conference involving your attempt to take over Sheffield Wednesday that you didn't think. <coughs> fans would forgive you if you showed an interest in Leeds. What has changed for you? Well, I've got to tell you, it's very interesting. They've been very generous. Because um, I live it. When I'm in England, I live it. Chelsea, I've got the penthouse. Um, they've all been totally supportive. They've also basically said, a mixture of lucky Leeds, we wish you well. And get the buggers back as soon as you can so we can stuff them. Which was, uh, photographs, handshakes, a lot. And uh, I was talking to one guy who got in the car on <coughs> Saturday. And I said, and I want to tell, I said, Mr. Mourinho is a real gentleman. And I said, I've just been talking to him. And he's agreed to let me have Robin on loan for the rest of the season. And for 10 seconds, he believed it, which was quite funny. I think we're getting to the end. Oh, at the back. Rob O'Neill, Real Radio. Um, Sorry? Rob O'Neill, Real Radio. Real Radio. What does that mean? The Western South Yorkshire Regional Radio Station. When you were in the Sheffield Wednesday, you said at the time that you weren't prepared to throw money down the drain because it would go straight to the bank. In this case, though, do you not feel that you're actually having to throw more money down the no, drain? No, no, no. Well, let me, let me explain the difference. Um, I am aware of the co-op's reputation and their past dealings. I wouldn't put a penny to Sheffield Wednesday until I was satisfied what the bank's attitude would be. I didn't want to put £10 million into Sheffield Wednesday, then get a letter from the bank the next day and say, by the way, reduce your facility by £10 million. That doesn't apply here because, uh, to the credit, again, of the board, um, lead you in credit. They don't owe the bank anything. So they're not answerable to them. And as long as they're keeping credit, which we intend to do, we don't have to do anything other than pay their charges. So hopefully we'll share the profits. Yeah, the guard, that's your line man. Are you still looking for other financial partners? speak up, sorry. Are you looking for other financial partners or backers, or is it just you? Are you offering? Uh, give me a couple of pounds. Uh, listen, every penny answer the old lady seven to read in the seat. We're happy to have two quid. I'll see you later after. Um, it comes back to the old thing that I told you before, that um, I'm not discussing our financial affairs of a private business, it's not in the best interest of the business or the fans. I'm going to ask that question again. What actually is Fortress, Fortress Sports Fund? Is this its only investment? Yeah, for, you are the Financial Times. Yes. Fortress Sports Fund is investing in Everton. It's got nothing to do with us. Sorry, I can't oh, no. oh, I just thought... Began with that. No. Yeah, I, I won't tell you what I said. Um, <coughs> it's the Forward Sports Foundation, based in Geneva, and as its name suggests, it helps for sports go forward. But why is it actually based in Geneva and not in Leeds in London? Well, I think that's irrelevant, that question. Well, well, like, well I've just who said... Who owns it? Who actually well, owns it? <coughs> it's a financial question, and I've already said I'm not answering. Lady at the back, I think. I'm from uh, BBC North. Maybe that's a question for your wife, maybe for you, but what have you been like? What's it been like being away from football? Well, I think she thinks I've been a pain in the arse. Darling, you like that someone? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think we're getting towards the end of this. Could you understand some people in football, or maybe Leeds fans, thinking this is all a bit artificial? And with respect, wealthy, wealthy that's, pure, that's, sure, that's pure speculation on your part. Well, well I'm not, I don't respond to speculation. speculation. I don't respond to speculation. Why? Well, well why should I? Um, well, football runs on look, you're, well like, that's your problem, not mine. Well, you're speculating that these might... Look, I'm not getting involved in an argument. I'm getting a bit annoyed, actually. Mm. The fact of the matter is... Well, answer the question. I'm going to answer the question. Uh, there is no basis, in fact, that people are speculating like that. So, look, I'm dealing with the supporters tonight. Yeah. In the fans' form, that's when we'll find out. All right, well, there's a statement that it looks artificial, like a well... Well, you can... Listen, you're not making a statement. You're here to make yeah. question. I'm not answering it. it. Please be quiet or I shall walk out. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Are there any other questions? Ken Bates at his Thank most colourful best there, getting involved in a little battle with a journalist, as he's uh, wont to do down the years plenty of times. Well,